Audio is critical for streamers and content creators. You want to be able to include the audio that will best enhance your stream. And if you're a, a teacher like me, a, a tutorial creator, how to creator, course creator, you want to be able to bring in audio from the different platforms and things that you're showing on screen. One of the greatest ways to be able to do that is to use a platform, an application called Loopback. <laughs> Loopback is a Mac only uh, virtual microphone creation software that allows you to grab audio inputs from all over your computer, make it available to places like Zoom, uh, places like Restream or other web apps like StreamYard, EVMux. The Loopback system is really powerful but there are some quibbles and quirks in making it work. There's some things you gotta understand. And in this crash course, we're gonna walk through all of those pieces just for you. Let's dive in. So here we are on the desktop. And the first thing I wanna say again, that keep in mind, if you are not on a Mac, uh, Loopback will not work for you, but there is a voice meter banana, and I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description and a colleague's video that really covers that well. Uh, if you are on a Windows machine, voice meter banana it ha operates fairly similarly to loopback. Um, first thing I wanna share, of course, is the, the, the trick of the trade with loopback is you're creating virtual microphones. And those microphones are then available to your entire computer wherever you are. You can see those microphones in the list. Um, the default microphone that Loopback comes with is called the pass-through microphone, and that's what you're seeing on screen right now. It's called pass-through. And every microphone that you have that you turn on right here, you see how these mics are all on, that means they are now available in the list for you to be able to select. The pass-through microphone is a little tricky in that it acts as both a target and a source, uh, target or destination and a source, meaning it is both a input, right? That's a source and an output. That's the destination. That means it's both a speaker, right? <laughs> and a microphone. And so it shows up in both places and you could use it to say, grab audio that you're playing from, let's say your stream deck or maybe QuickTime or Spotify. You have an app that's on your computer. You're playing audio. You would simply select that microphone as your speaker. And so here we go into sound settings and you'll see in sound settings, you can select your input and output, right? It would help if I click the thing. <laughs> so we have it here. You can see here, output and input output. This is my, where my audio will go to. And you can see in this list that I have the pass-through mic available to me here. And it even says virtual pass-through mic is available both on input and output. You can see that pass-through mic is available there too. And so if I were to select that as my output for the audio on my computer, I could also then in Zoom go to my microphone and select pass-through mic as my microphone, as my input. And so that's how you would get that audio to go that way. Most people are not going to utilize it. So I just wanted to explain it to you so you know what it is but you can easily just turn it off and it will be not be available on your system and it won't confuse you. Many of us are gonna have to create our microphones. And so we're gonna create one simply by coming right here to the bottom that says new virtual device. And we click that, it automatically comes and looks and looking like this, loop back audio. So we're just gonna call this new mic, new mic. And in the new mic, you always have a pass-through. Um, the pass-through is already there. And I am telling you right now, get rid of it. <laughs> just get rid of it. You have a pass-through mic already. So just get rid of that pass-through that that pass -through piece because you don't want that. You want to be able to uh, culminate, basically take all of these applications that you would like, put them into one microphone and send them to a particular application. In this case, we're going to use EVMux. So one of the things, that I, analogies that I like to use right here is Consider yourself as packing a suitcase and you're packing as this microphone is your suitcase. What are the things you're going to need at that destination? And so if this microphone is going to be used for my web apps like EVMux, what are the things that I would want in that microphone? Well, the first one would be 
of course, my microphone. And so here you can see the Rodecaster Pro. I'm gonna select that and you can even see my audio already on screen. You can go to the options and I can actually adjust the the, the level of that particular individual asset that's in this microphone. I can go and select, uh, let's say Finder. I always like to have Finder because if I'm gonna play something, I'm gonna show something on screen, if I hit the space bar to see what that thing is, I do wanna make sure that it is there. One of the things you have to be mindful of when you select applications is that you have this options op options thing here and you see where it says mute when capturing? What that means is I will not be able to hear what's happening with that particular sound if I leave this checked and it is checked on default. So if you want to hear it yourself, you've got to make sure you uncheck that. So that's another thing that I would want to add in there. Another thing that I'm going to, I always add in is Ecamm Live because I'm utilizing that for a lot of the things, screen sharing and different item, other items that I'm using. Um, so definitely want to make sure Ecamm Live is in there. Sometimes I have audio delay on my microphone. I'd rather select this and have my audio come through Ecamm Live than for it to come through any other way. Uh, another thing that I always like to have in my application or in my microphone for, for web apps, like uh, in this case, EV Mux, I want to have my uh, Zoom. Uh, Zoom is is, is a, another a really great application. Sometimes I might have some people in Zoom while I'm having a, a live stream with EV Mux. And so I would want to make sure that Zoom is there as well. Again, notice I have the ability to adjust the audio on any of these microphones where I see fit and for the applications, right? Not the physical microphones like the Rodecaster Pro, but for the applications, you do want to make sure you uncheck that that box that says mute when capturing. Another one that I, this is a tricky question. Would I want to have Google Chrome in this microphone? And the answer is no. Why? Because I'm going to use this mic for EV Mux, which is already inside Google Chrome. I could possibly put Safari in here. Um, uh, I could possibly put some of these other things in here. Um, uh, but one of the things I am going to select real quick is Elgato stream deck. I'm going to put that into that microphone, select it. You can see that it is here. I'm going to uncheck that box. And again, I can also adjust the audio on that. Lastly, we will do Safari since it was mentioned. And if you don't see it in the list, you can just click on select application. Um, and you can scroll through, you'll see all the applications on your computer. I mean, I have, I've, I've done tutorials with DaVinci Resolve. And so sometimes it's critical to be able to have DaVinci Resolve in the microphone so that I can showcase what's happening with DaVinci Resolve on screen. Um, and I can make, allow my audience to hear what that sounds like. And then lastly, of course, we talked about having the browser. And so since I'm not going to use Safari as my, uh, as my as my browser for EV Mux, I am going to add that in here as well, and I can uncheck that box. And maybe I have something playing in Safari. And so now I have all these microphones, and you can see that these lines are all here, and they're all the the microphone uh, lines are coming into channel one and channel two. That this is your output channels. Not really much to do here. Um, you can add some other things here if you'd like, and have the uh, lines going to these. If you would want that level of complexity, I would recommend just for simplicity to leave that as it is. Then lastly, you have the ability to monitor. Um, again, another layer of complexity. The re only reason why you'd want to monitor is for you to be able to hear what this sounds like. And for the most part, since probably your headphones are the uh, only headphones that audio is going to on your system, you don't necessarily need to have a monitor. So we're going to leave that blank as it is. Now, this mic is set up and it has all these things in it. Um, what I want to showcase right now is that this mic would not be a good mic to use in Zoom. And this is Zoom over here. Why would this not be a good mic to use in Zoom? I can see your hand in the back and the, you are correct because we have Zoom in here. And so if we have Zoom in here, we don't want to include this. We, want to, we don't want to take Zoom into Zoom, right? If you have this as a suitcase, you have Zoom inside that suitcase. Do you want to take that into Zoom? No, you want to take this into EV Mux. That's what this mic was created for. And you'll notice that I have a mic created for Ecamm. 
I have a mic created for web apps, basically anything I use in Chrome, and I have a mic created for Zoom. Um, and I would recommend that you create mics that are specific to the situation you're in. Why do I have a different mic for Ecamm? Well, in my web apps mic, I have Ecamm included. In the Ecamm mic, I have Ecamm excluded, but I have Chrome included. You see, I have Chrome here. Um, in my Zoom mic, I have Zoom excluded. I have Ecamm included. I also have Chrome included. So it's a subset of the same things, excluding the application that I'm actually going to. And because these mics are all on, right? Turn that off, off and on, always toggles it till it is now available on all over the computer. But because these mics are now on, they are now visible in the different applications. So let's take a look at what this looks like inside our web-based platforms. First one being EV mugs. You can see that that's on screen right now. Let's make that full screen. Uh, we'll just need to come here to settings, uh, go to audio, and we would need to select new mic, which is the mic that we just created. Uh, most of the time it's set to Rodecaster Pro, uh, but in this case, we would simply select new mic and you can see all the mics, V mic for Zoom, Zoom V mic for web apps, new mic, V mic for Ecamm are all already there. So I'm selecting new mic and it takes a second for it to register, but you can see now that my audio is being picked up from the Rodecaster Pro, which is included inside the new mic. Um, in addition to uh, what you are, what what you will see here, if I were to play uh, some 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 music from the Finder, let's do that real quick. New Finder window, all right? Got my Finder window here. Let's go to music. Um, here is some some music here. I'm going to pull this to the side a little bit so you can see. This is Finder, so keep your eye right there. And I'm now playing. some music, right? So we're playing some music and you can see that that's there. It's pretty loud, so we can pull that down some, right? Pull that down some. Now the question is, how do we tell if that's playing inside EV Mux? You can already see that it's playing right here, but let's go to the audio. And you can see that that's playing. So that audio is now inside EV Mux. And uh, we can simply come back here and turn that music off. So that's Finder. Finder is now playing uh, in EV Mux. What if we wanted to play something from Ecamm? So Ecamm has sound effects. If I play the applause, you can see, you're gonna see it here. And you can see that that is playing here. And again, you can see that it's playing inside EV Mux. If I play um, music, you can see that that's playing here. And you can see that that's playing inside EV Mux. The idea there being that if you are playing music in the background, you definitely want to ensure that you're wearing headphones um, and that your uh, settings are set so that you are not uh, canceling noise, right? Because sometimes the platforms that you're using can see the background music as noise, as, as background noise. So you can see that my background noise setting is off. Same thing you'll want to do in Zoom as well. Um, similarly, we could do the same inside StreamYard. So here we are in StreamYard, go to settings, go to uh, audio right here, go to the mic, and you would simply go to new mic. Now, I have some other mics that were created, but I'm just looking at this one because this is the one that we created together in this video. And you can see my audio is already being picked up here. You can also see that background noise is unchecked, echo cancellation unchecked, and so if I play some music, let's double click here. Let's get, uh, let's get, uh, yeah, let's do the same thing with Ecamm again. We'll play some, a sound effect. This is the DJ air horn. You can see that that's playing there. You can also see that it's playing here. Let's do that one more time. That's, that's playing there. And so that sound is not being suppressed and it is working well for us. So that is StreamYard. StreamYard would be set and ready to go with that new mic virtual. Again, here in a restream, all right? Same concept, hit the arrow next to your microphones. You get all the list of microphones. You can see now that there's new mic virtual. We select that one. 
And if you were to go to the wheel, go to the wheel for settings and go to audio, you'll see that that audio indicator is there. It's picking up sound right now. And if we do the same test as we did before, where we play something through Ecamm, you'll see that that audio is being picked up. You'll see that that audio is being picked up. So um, those are some of the, the, the quick things that we can do. Um, I did want to showcase even here that even inside my, uh, community platform, which is Kajabi, um, I can select my microphone. So if I go here, I can go to audio settings and you can see similar to all the other web-based, uh, things that we have video audio is here. I can select the new mic. And once I select that, hit apply, um, my, that, that audio is going to then be picked up, uh, from that system now. So let, now new mic has been selected and I'm going to unmute my mic. You can see that those audio levels are there. That is the magic of loopback in a nutshell. And I really think is super beneficial for anybody that is a course creator teaching something. There's so many different ways to be able to utilize these sound effects to bring them into your live stream, bring them into your uh, videos, bring them into your experience so that people can not only see what you're doing on screen, but they can hear it when you decide to use it, uh, being able to create these virtual microphones on the fly. One thing I'll say, share with you here, just as a bonus at the end of our crash course is that you also want to make sure you don't feel bad about creating multiple microphones, create as many as you need for the different scenarios that you find yourself in loop back uh, pricing and information will be in the uh, description below as well. Uh, one of the things that I always find interesting is of course, when we're doing this crash course series is that there is always questions about the different platforms that we highlighted. Uh, we've highlighted a number of them today. And so if you're interested in learning more about Ecamm, um, EVMux, or even StreamYard, I've got a whole crash course series right here. Uh, it's a playlist, a new playlist on our uh, YouTube channel. And in there, we cover several platforms. This video will be added to that playlist along with StreamYard, EVMux, and Ecamm, and we're adding more. Uh, so keep checking back. Yeah, like I said, hit that playlist right there, click on one of those videos, and we'll see you over there. Grace and peace, fam.